Hello, this is Steven Owen. Yes, we're back with another Batman 66 episode review. Today, we'll be reviewing, reviewing the episode, The Mad Hatter Runs Afoul. The last time we'll be seeing The Mad Hatter. So without further ado, let's get into the review. When we last left Batman and Robin, they were trapped in some kind of, well, chamber where essentially radiation will be pouring onto them and essentially enough radiation is going to essentially kill them. We do the usual opening credits and we leave where we left off. We then come back to find that Batman and Robin has been turned into skeletons and that the Mad Hatter and his crew have returned to the scene of the crime to see their handiwork where they find them essentially completely turned into skeletons. The Mad Hatter has essentially succeeded while well, he believes to have succeeded where all the other villains have failed. He finally has destroyed Batman and Robin. He then makes his escape. Word then spreads to Police Commissioner Gordon Chief O'Hara about Batman's death and they are absolutely beside themselves and absolutely begin to fall apart. The word then spreads all over Gotham and even across the world to places like Russia, Britain and the President of the United States. The world is in complete shock of th their deaths. But of course as we know they're clearly not dead. Batman has managed to use one of his devices to somehow pr protect him and Robin from the radiation. And that Professor Overbeck had managed to, when he recovered, take them out and put skele fake skeletons in the there, along with Batman and Robin's costume on top, to prevent to make it look like they're dead. Thinking that if the Mad Hatter believes that they're dead, he would be, he would no doubt continue with his plot without any, well, without any repercussions of possibly being caught. As we go on, we then. As we go on, we then find the Mad Hatter is at his hideout where he has put the cow in the water tank to prevent anyone from tracing it. He then reveals that the ruby he stole was actually fake and plans to use it to replace a real ruby ruby for a big for a big payoff. And with him having Batman's cow, he has essentially gotten everything he's always wanted. And he and his boys are about to leave, especially since when they heard the rumors when there's all of Gotham so Batman and Robin are dead. All businesses are shut down, and he sees a poetic and he sees a good chance to strike now. Though his female accomplice is getting cold feet. Though he has reminded that who had made Batman and Robin famous crime fighters, criminals. So if you want to be respectful, stay crooked. I kind of find that a little bit true in a way. And there's a and there's a bit of logic to that. Maybe the show's really starting to rub off on me. We then cut back to Wayne Manor with Alfred, with Alfred and Harriet essentially serving um, guests, well, about to serve guests, you know, food and refreshments because of Batman and Robin's death, as everyone is grieving their loss. However, Batman, and, however, Bruce and Dick try to explain to Anne Harriet that it's possibly Batman and Robin are alive, though she's not believing it. They then head to the study to call Gordon and Chief O'Hara to reveal that they're not dead which they are shocked when they find that the bat phone has actually rung and they find out that they're still alive. Batman and Robin then go into the bat cave and use all their resources to find where the Mad Hatter is. We also find also that the Mad Hatter has stolen his item, but he gets the news of a lifetime when he finds out that the dynamic duo are still alive and makes his way back to the hideout. Batman and Robin are still trying to figure out where the Mad Hatter is, but thanks to the fact his bat owl is in some water, they manage to find out... Um, because it made some echo device that it is in a water tank. They then managed to locate it and find it a water tank near the near a possible building and head there. They then head into the said building and have the woman take them to the water tower. Batman and Robin then begin to climb up the water tower and a bat fight breaks out between the Mad Hatter and his men. I really like it, but I also feel it's nothing compared to the finale bat fight for the Mad Hatter's first appearance. The goons are knocked down and the police have turned up to essentially help arrest the Mad Hatter and all his henchmen. Just as Batman and Robin are about to leave, they see all the civilians waving their hand at the rejoice that Batman and Robin are still alive. We then cut to Wayne Manor where, she, where essentially Anne Harriet is asking how do they know that Batman and Robin were still alive. Even though Alfred is encouraging them to tell the truth, they tell them that that is that it was Alfred who told them. And that, you know, and that, you know, he's given a plausible story that she believed. And we end the episode there with a cheesy one-liner. And that next week, we will be seeing two of our favorite villains for a team-up. And who are they? Stick around for that episode. Nothing really changes in regards to Batman and Robin. But I do like how everyone's reacting when they find out Batman and Robin are essentially dead. And how everyone's grieving. And Harriet... 
Chief O'Hara, Gordon, it's all very interesting, and I like how we get to see that. We also get to see more Bruce and Dick in this episode, regards to actually more screen time of them, comparing to the usual opening and ending of a two-parter, something I find to be very different and very entertainable and absolutely enjoyable. But of course, we can't keep going without discussing the main villain himself. David Wayne's Mad Hatter is absolutely extraordinary, and some of my, and arguably one of my favorite favorite villains from the show. His performance, his energetic personality, and I like how it's still consistent with his motivations and everything. It's kind of sad to find out that this is his last time we would see the Mad Hatter, and that the Mad Hatter never returned. Now, too, I wish he did, or at least uh, the Mad Hatter returned by season 3, as there was a huge, as for me, two villains had the biggest opportunity to come for season 3. The bookworm, because Barbara Gordon worked in a library, and the Mad Hatter. True, he has Batman's cow, but he, but because he's such a hat obsessed, he could easily be obsessed with Batgirl's cow to add to his collection. The reason why, of course, he never came back after this episode was that he was done with the series. He felt it was cheap and didn't want to be a part of it anymore. Despite the fact that arguably that the, he got a lot of fan mail just from this one performance, I'm kind of sad. But I understand that an actor wants to pursue whatever role they want. But I really wish that he could have come back, or at least have another actor to take on the role of the Mad Hatter in Season 3 and have him do his own unique and different interpretation. It's really sad that this will be the last time we'll see the Mad Hatter, but at least he went out with a very good episode in my opinion. The Mad Hatter Runs a Foul for me is a really nice fun episode. It introduces new ideas and goes, for me, on a good roll with them. I also feel that it is definitely written different and it feels different compared to the Catwoman and Sandman team up episode, which is why I always like these episodes. They're not in top 10, but I can't deny I've always had a great love for these episodes. They've been some of my favorites and they've been some of my favorite episodes to watch. There's a lot of interesting stuff that they've done in this episode, and I really like that we've taken full advantage of it. I loved every minute of this and the episode that preceded it, and it's kind of sad that this is the last time we'd see the Mad Hatter. There we have it, the Mad Hatter runs afoul, the last time we would see the Mad Hatter. But tune in next time when we will be getting another villain team-up already. If this ain't no ordinary team-up, this is a team up of two of our favorite villains. Who are they? We'll tune in for next time. Till next time, tune in to the same Stephen Hour, the same Stephen channel. Ladies and gentlemen, so long for now.